Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I am your brilliant host, Vasavi Kumar. I am so happy to be here with Emily Williams, who I get to call a friend. And one of the things that I absolutely love about you, Emily, is the simplicity in which you speak about money, about mindset, about success. And every time I'm around you, I always ask myself, yeah, why not me? Like, why can't I have that, you know? And that's what I absolutely love about you today. So I, I mean, that's what I love about you, not just today, every day. But that's why my audience today is in, in for such a treat because when it comes to mastering your money mindset and giving yourself the permission to want what you want without apology, you're the best. So I just want to say thank you for taking your time today and coming on the Say It Out Loud podcast. How are you? Well, amazing. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm great. Excited okay. to be here. Yes. So, you know, as a, as a success coach, entrepreneur, and you're an author um, and CEO of the I Heart My Life brand, I Heart My Life, and host of the I Heart My Life podcast, like I was saying before, you have this ability to just make these complicated money concepts into something that is actually actionable and simple for people, which I think is what people really are craving, right? It's like, it doesn't have to be, it's not that it's, it's, it's easy, but you do it in a way that's just so easeful. And so what I would love just for my audience to hear, to go back to a period of time in your life where you weren't this way, right? I know that you've had a series of jobs in your life from, I, I was like, doing my research, like nanny, matchmaker, a VA, and just all these other roles. And then there was even a time in your life when you couldn't even get a job at Starbucks, right? So how did you go from that to who you are and who you be today? Yeah, great question. Um, it's always interesting to think about where to start this. <laughs> so I definitely, you know, was always somebody who meant, felt like she was meant for something big, but I didn't know what that thing actually was, but it was always that little, like, I like to call it a little whisper and mm -hmm. intuition that there was something more for me and something different. Mm -hmm. And I grew up around entrepreneurs. And so I had a feeling that it was going to be some sort of business, but I didn't have clarity around what that was. So when I started, uh, uh, college, I actually got into a psychology program. Actually, I start. no one really knows this, but I was a double major business and psychology and I hated the business classes. So I dropped that, ended up doing a bit of Spanish and psychology. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I would go and get a master's in counseling psychology once I was done. So that was the plan. I applied to 12 schools around the United States. Uh, and I was literally driving to Northwestern in Chicago, which is, was my chosen school. And I had this feeling in the pit of my stomach, like it wasn't the right step for me after, you know, four years of school, flying around the world, looking at all these grad schools, and then ultimately to be almost there and realize it wasn't the next step. Um, and I started crying and my mom was driving and she looked over to me and just asked me what was wrong. And I told her I just couldn't do this and I needed more time to make my decision. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what had happened to her that day because she's normally like, she's not like, I, I, she is strict, but in that moment, she was just super chill and understanding. And she's like, okay. And we turned the car around, around we, we turned the car around and went back to Ohio and I didn't go to grad school. Yay, so, mom. Yay, I know yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. And so, yeah, that was the period of time where I just entered into this massive quarter life crisis because I thought I had had it all mapped out, mm -hmm. but you know, ended up really lost and confused and, and ended up trying to get a job at Starbucks, like you said, and got denied three times and worked at a hospital for a bit and all the things. And that was really my first sort of step in the direction of following my heart, even when it didn't make sense. And that's such a huge part of the brand today where most of the time our dreams don't make sense. And mm -hmm. it starts with a feeling or an, a, an intuition, um, that you need to go in a different direction or you need to start something new, but most of the time people ignore that or deny it or feel just too nervous about it and are questioning how it's ever going to work out. They get stuck in the rational mind. Um, and so because of that story and everything that's happened since I'm just such a proponent of, you know, your truth really is in your heart. And that's where all the goodness is. And oftentimes it's just our programming in our mind that gets in the way of that. So, okay, so I have had, you know, 
I've I've had the honor to be able to like call your husband up if I needed some advice. I'm like James, I'm I'm kind of spiraling. Can you just can you just talk to me for like a minute? And I've been able to come to your house, which is such a, a great example of you following your heart. And you, um, I remember when I first went, you know came to your house, and I remember walking inside and it was just beautiful. Everything. I mean, every single piece of your. I mean, every single nook and cranny. It's it's just luxurious. And I'm a I'm a Taurus, so I'm all about simplicity and luxury. And I remember telling my mother after I left your house, I called her up and I said, I was at my friend Emily Williams house. I said, it was absolutely beautiful. And I said, you know what I realized having left your house, I told my mother, I don't dream big enough. I don't dream big enough. I I think, well, I want to say that. I actually want to say that differently. I've always had big dreams, but something has always stopped me from actually like bringing that to life. For me, it, it, it's never necessarily been in the form of a house. It's been other things in my career though, you know, but I would love to hear from you and just how you work with your clients and even in your own personal life. When you have a dream, when you have a vision, when you have something in your heart that speaks to you, you allow yourself to obviously want what you want, but then how do you navigate those other voices in your head that may be like, Emily, just stop. This is too much. This is too big. Or why can't you just want something a little smaller? You know, we all have those voices in our head that are so good at just shrinking our goal just a little bit, right? And what you've done so beautifully, even just looking at how you live your life, how you show up, your beautiful home, which is which just speaks to who you are as a person. How do you allow yourself and what do you say to yourself to expand internally to reach the goal because most people shrink their goals. But what you do, and I don't wanna speak for you, but I'm just gonna say what I, what I observe with you is that you expand, you've expanded who you are internally to meet your goal. How do you, how do, you do that? Take us inside the brain of Emily Williams. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it's really, um, I love this question so much and I've tried to break it down because I do think part of me has always been like that to a certain extent, because, you know, I saw the entrepreneurs in my family have big dreams and do things that were a little bit different, but I definitely took it to a whole nother level after that quarter life crisis. (laughs) I felt like I was meant to live in London, England. And for somebody who grew up in Ohio with family that really never leaves Ohio, everyone's still there. That was very strange. And that was definitely one of those moments where I did get some pushback, even from friends like, Oh, you think you're too good for us. You know, you have to leave, you have to move to another country. And so there was a lot of, um, just people not understanding my dreams and not getting why I felt like I needed to move somewhere else. But somehow I was able to tune that out and just continue to follow this belief that I was meant to live in England. And it was so strong. It was such a, just a massive pool to live in another country. And I just kept remembering you know, my heart kind of got me into this mess. That's the reason why I didn't go to grad school. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to trust it. I'm going to follow it. And it was almost like, and I'll, I can share some, some more recent examples, but it was almost like I couldn't not do that. I didn't know any other way to live my life besides doing the things that I love. And I think you get to the point, like even recently in my business, where I decided to make some big pivots, Mm -hmm. I got to the point where I really didn't even care what people thought. I didn't care if it worked out or not. I just had to be authentic to myself Mm -hmm. and follow those breadcrumbs, follow those whispers, those things that were calling me. Because for me, being in alignment, being authentic to my heart is the most important thing. And when you start to practice that in your life, whether it's with something small, like moving to an, or big, like moving to another country or something small, like, I don't know, do where do I want to go to eat for dinner? Or do I want to buy myself flowers today? Or should I indulge in this massage? When you start to practice following your heart and stepping outside of the rational mind that's trying to hold you back, you develop trust muscles with yourself and you're able to see like, oh, this is my true desire. And I know when I follow that, this is what happens. And I also truly believe, you know, there's this beautiful quote by Raymond Hollywell. And he talks about how you following your desires is basically you stepping into the fully, your fully, uh, expressed life, the fullest expression of you. And so I believe that when I continue to trust my heart, that's me being fully expressed. 
And I also believe that I'm not going to be aware of a desire unless it's possible for me. And when I got that, everything shifted because it was like, okay, because it's come across my awareness, I already know I'm aligned to it because I'm aware of it. I also know not everyone wants to live in London, England or whatever the thing is. So it's unique to me. So that must be my truth. And it's like this instant reaction where it's like, okay, that's my desire. Awesome. It's my truth. And, and it's just like as simple as that in my mind at this point. <laughs> I want to, okay, so I, I want to share what I'm observing and I want my audience to really just, I want you to pay attention to even how Emily speaks. And because this is a Say It Out Loud podcast, words are everything. Words carry a vibration, right? I, I'm very mindful of the words that I'm using towards myself because every word carries the vibration. So I just want everyone listening to what I'm noticing is the conviction in which you say what you say. And that conviction can really only come from the doing and can come from like that repetitive action and you knowing and you having built your trust muscles. I love that. I think I actually want that to be the name of this episode is, is developing your trust muscle. I was just saying this to a client before this. She was talking about how she wants to feel confident. And I was like, you know, Confidence is not really a feeling. It is a skill that can be built and you build it by doing. You can't ever feel confident and then go do the thing. It's usually like you're shit scared and you just go do it. And you're like, oh my God, I did it. That's how you actually build that confidence. I see it the same way in your own life. Intuition is a practice. Trusting your, you know, you know, really honing in on that desire and following through with it. So is that something that you recommend for anyone as even if it's like as small as where you want to eat today, like because obviously moving can feel so big for people, right? So how would you recommend my audience just in their everyday life? Because that's like the biggest thing that my audience I know that they are working on is trusting themselves to say what they want to say out loud, trusting themselves to pivot. So yeah, how would you do that just in our everyday life, like yeah. develop that trust muscle? So it's really about tapping into your desires. And one of the first things I did when I was building my business is I wrote a whole list of everything I wanted. And as you mentioned, you know, we now we built a house in Austin, Texas. That was never, ever, ever in a million years, part of the plan, but we can talk about that later. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but on my list of desires, I did want to own a house, but it wasn't a desire that I wanted this second. Like I was very clear, like I actually really loved renting in London and meant that we could step up, you know, as we made more money, et cetera. Um, and so I started with this list of desires that had everything, you know, big and small on it from, I want to get a manicure every month to, I want to have a hot yoga membership to, I want to be able to afford to go out to dinner. Cause I used to like drink a glass of Rose before going out to dinner. So I you didn't have, have to have money. Yeah. yeah. I, listen, I've done it. I've yeah. done the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So everything big or small, like just get it down on paper because the issue is okay. most people can't even admit what they want to themselves. Okay. I'm not telling everyone to go get on this podcast or post it on social media, like literally just write it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And if that's too difficult, think about it from the flip side, ask yourself, what am I currently tolerating in my life? That doesn't feel good. So maybe it's, um, I'm tolerating not being able to buy organic food at whole foods. And like, that really doesn't feel good in my body, or I'm tolerating being in a job that doesn't light me up, or I'm tolerating not having enough money every single month that will show you obviously what you don't want, which gives you information about what you do want. Mm -hmm. So the more, the most important thing is to get that list together, um, big or small, and then you can ask yourself what would be required of me to even do one of these things today. Oh, that's me. Okay, so you know what? I, I said this on another podcast interview to somebody else. I, for, I forgot, I forgot. I will look back, but like someone was saying, oh, Alison Bird was saying this to me. Her and I were talking. She was here in Austin. She was hanging out with me at my house. We were just talking about our desires and both of us just came up with this and we were like, our desires are a requirement. It's no longer like our desires are this whimsical thing, like maybe one day, like my desire is a requirement. So I like that you even are using that word, like what would it require for, for me to even bring that to life today? So let's use an example. Yeah. So, yeah. and even like one of my coaches she used to say, make it a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. And so is in, in that quote, I'll have to, you can put it in the show notes, but basically that quote that I was referring to, he talks about how desires are basically manifest by your continuous expectation of their fulfillment. And this is the issue. So many people, right. Are like, Oh, I want this thing, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay. I'll just forget it. Right. And then they just, they're so quick to throw it out. 
Whereas you need to continually expect that this thing is going to happen, even if it hasn't yet. And most people forget like how important action actually is. It's so easy for people to have big picture desires out there. Of course, anyone can have that, Mm -hmm. but let's just take a, a huge one for my clients is flying first class. Mm -hmm. Yet they never look up how much it's going to cost to buy the first class ticket. Or when they go to the airport, they don't even check to see if there's an upgrade available. Mm -hmm. Like it's the simplest steps that we're not doing. And we're stopping ourselves from having that be our current reality because we think that we know what the cost is going to be. We automatically, you know, decide that we can't afford it yet, but we never Mm -hmm. actually do the research. Or if you want to buy a house, you know, do you know exactly where you want that to be? When, when James and I went to Vail for the first time back in 2015, not only did we extend our trip by two weeks because we loved it so much, I found a real estate agent to show us a $27 million house. So I could get into the vision of what I wanted to create, build a relationship with someone who could help me make that happen and actually start to feel like that's a future version of my reality. It's a desire that will happen. So like, are you actually taking the steps as well? So how, okay. So I love that you, okay. I love that you did this with, with the veil. And even though the veil house, it's not, I'm, I'm assuming the veil house is not any time in the near future, but it's a, it's definitely something that you want in, in this lifetime. And so what you did was, you met with the realtor there. And I wanted to share this quick story. When I went to Playa del Carmen, I love Mexico. I I love the people of Mexico. It's a straight shot from Austin. I went there last year and I thought to myself, man, I would just be so great to have like a place here. Like I just, I love the flight. It's like, you know, being a New Yorker, I used to go straight to Miami. That's just what we did. So Austin, Mexico, great. And so I met with the realtor there, not even thinking, oh wow, I'm gonna get this place, right? But I met her. And she showed me, we saw seven properties and I was still like, oh, I I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to come up with the deposit. It was like 60,000 bucks or something like that, right? For the deposit. How am I going to do this? But I found this place, Emily. It was like, it was like a five-story bougie ass condo. Like I put the boo in bougie, okay? And I saw this beautiful condo, like beautiful rooftop pool. There's like a co-working place, a block from the ocean, vegetarian restaurant, like on either end of the block. Like it's just in the center. And the location was like, Oh my God. And I remember thinking to myself, I don't know anything about real estate. How, how, like, I don't know anything about real estate investing, but she showed me the place. We saw the renderings and I was like, I'm going to do this. And I don't think had I even made that appointment while I was in Playa del Carmen, I went on a Facebook group and I looked up Playa del Carmen Realtors. And the first person who reached out to me, her name was Sophie. We're still friends. We talk on WhatsApp once a month. She reached out and I was like, okay, I put out the call for a realtor. She responded, let's go. And I said, this is this is how it's supposed to happen. Like, this is it. And so, you know, my property is going to be ready in October. I asked my mom for the deposit, which was very healing for our relationship because I had broken her trust in the past many times in my addiction. And so that has made us stronger because I'm almost paid off paying her off. And it's just been great for my own life and just my relationship with her. But the thing that I, I, so the reason why I thought of this story is because one of the things that people don't do, which you just highlighted so beautifully, is that even though Veil may not be on your radar in the next year or even two years, you went, you loved it, you extended it, and you met with the realtor. And I remember you sharing this in your stories. So how important is it in this process of listening to our desires, following through with them and bringing them to life to like, even like to test drive, right? Cause like, that's really test driving. What you did was test drive a place in Vail, right? You found a place, you walked through it. How important is that in this entire process of creating a life that you love? Yeah. And I mean, first of all, I want to say one thing, like when I do something like that and I test drive it, I don't actually think to myself, oh, this is not going to be in the immediate future. I think to myself, I am setting myself up for any timeline that the universe wants to provide. Like if I have, you know, something happen in the business tomorrow and get $60 million. Amazing. Okay. Maybe that is a decision I'll make if I like, whatever the thing is. Um, so I don't put a limitation on when I think something's going to happen. 
And I totally know what you're saying. Cause I wouldn't say like, oh yeah, I want to buy this tomorrow, but I wouldn't also not say that because I'm just mm-hmm. open. I'm open to receiving. Um, and so for me, I feel like it's everything. You have to step into the vision of what it is that you're looking to create, mm-hmm. because if you don't like, you're just keeping it further down the line and you don't really understand how it's going to feel. And you're mm-hmm. not even giving yourself the chance to have it now. So I like to think about like, how can I set up the pieces so that this like puzzle could come together quicker? Mm -hmm. How can I get into the energy of it? How can I continue to feel what it would feel like to be the person that owns a $27 million house or, you know, the beautiful five-story bougie place in Mexico, um, and like step into the vision today, because there's nothing stopping you from going to an open house or viewing something or having a conversation with a real estate agent or talking to someone about the business or buying the URL. And yet so often we're like, well, I don't know what the next step is going to be. So I'm not even going to put, you know, my foot forward. I want to say thank you for saying that. And also, um, like helping me see that I noticed that I, you know, even I got to be honest, even as I, as I was just saying that to you, as I was saying like, oh, I know it's not in the immediate future. As I was saying it, I was having like an out of body experience. And I was like, well, who am I to say that it's not in the immediate future? Exactly. Like I, I observed myself saying that to you. So I really want to say thank you to you. And for everyone, I mean, like y'all listening, like, I just want you to like, this is what it means to be human. But this is why we bring people like Emily on the show, because even I, the human that I am, who has her own limitations, even in my languaging, I, I I limited your possibility. Who am I to say it's not in your immediate future? So thank you for saying that. And so I want to shift into languaging because I don't remember, I still don't, I, I, I was like trying to think of the conversation you and I had at our mutual friend Nita's house. And I said something to you and then you asked me like such a simple question. It was so calm. I don't even remember it because it was just, I just remember how good I felt. And I might've started crying because, you know, that's what I do. But it's just like, you you challenged me in the kindest way possible and i remember that and like that's when i was like man i really like her like she she you saw me before i even could see myself you know so how important is it for you just to kind of go deeper into this about languaging how we speak about because this is a say it out loud podcast how do we say out loud what we want how do we talk about the things that we want how do we stay open because words have power so like how how do you approach even speaking about what you want Yeah, this has been definitely a learning curve because even though I was a psychology major, I didn't realize the power of my words. Mm -hmm. Uh, But when I started my business and I started to work with a coach who was actually a money mindset expert, especially around wealth, I started to realize, you know, some of the verbiage and even just like the negative emotion that I had around money. And Mm -hmm. so I became really like just hyper aware of the language that I was using when I talked about possibility and my desires and abundance and all the things that we've been covering today. And even now as somebody who is pregnant with a daughter, I keep thinking like, okay, she can now hear me. Like, what am I saying out loud that's seeping in? What am I watching on TV that's going into my consciousness as well as hers? Like, is it serving us or is it doing the complete opposite? And, you know, whether it's your own language or the people that you hang out with on a regular basis, that stuff is going to have an effect and your words are so, so powerful and your words can create your reality. And I'm not somebody who says, just go to the top of a mountain and meditate your way to success. Mm -hmm. Like I believe in taking action as well, Mm -hmm. but your verbiage and the way that you talk to yourself in your mind, that's going to impact the action you do or you don't take. It's going to impact your belief system. It's going to impact how you come across to other people. So it literally affects everything. So when it comes to money and how we speak to ourselves, so I've been working on with my therapist, um, unshaming a lot of things that I, I've I've taken on. You know, being the daughter of first generation um, Indian immigrants, I'm a first gen. You know, it, I, and you can speak to anyone in the Indian community. I mean, even Nita and I were joking about like the all the hidden like emotional guilt and like manipulation. We've just kind of like taken that from our parents, and we're just we we're so used to guilting and manipulating ourselves and and shaming ourselves. And I know that for you personally, you've climbed your way out of massive credit card debt, thirty thousand dollars I read, and also ninety thousand of student loans. So how what are some steps that people can take to get out of their own shame spiral and how they speak about their debt, how they speak about how much money they have in their bank account. How did you do it? 
Well, I believe that our current reality is not an indication of what's possible or meant for us. And if we believed that where we are today is how we're always going to be and what we're, our reality is always going to be, then obviously we wouldn't take any steps to, to better our lives. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized like this is just the current chapter, this is not what I'm capable of. And the fact that I had student loan debt was because I went for my dreams. Mm -hmm. I was able to release a lot of the shame around that, you know, spending that money, getting into debt, all the things. And I think that's one of the biggest things, especially for women, is really to understand that, yes, this might be the current reality, but let's start to look at what you actually want your reality to be mm -hmm. and recognize that you can create anything that you want and start to say, you know, even... I like to call it flip the switch. So mm -hmm. even the simplest things like um, money is hard to make, flip it to money's easy to make. Money's mm. always flowing to me. I'm a money magnet. And so in the beginning of building my business, I had post-it notes all around our house with all these affirmations. And I would have things, I would have little alarms pop up on my phone with all of these words and money goals on them. And one of the best things you can do is also to remember that money loves a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so when you have your desire list, put a monetary amount next to it, because I think sometimes we're not in reality around how much we actually need to achieve our dream lives. Mm -hmm. And it probably is less than you think, mm -hmm. at least in the beginning. And so you can start to take steps towards that now. And when your mind sees, oh, it's actually easy for me to get a manicure every month, or it's easy for me to buy that house or whatever the thing is, big or small, mm -hmm. then it's like validation that you're headed in the right direction and, and this is possible. Um, but you have to have that awareness first, like that this is not your forever reality and I can change. You have to have that growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Absolutely. And I want to, I also want to make sure that we didn't, um, I didn't miss any steps because I know you said what you have your clients do. You have them first tap into their desires, list out what they want, desire versus tolerating. So if it's hard for you to be clear on what you desire, shift the languaging and say, okay, this is what I'm tolerating. So that's, you know, it could be difficult for people to really start to ask themselves what they want. But I love that suggestion of, uh, of giving people the permission to even say what they're tolerating, which is hard too for a lot, but you have a choice either speak about what you desire or speak about what you're tolerating. Second is to look at what is required. What do you actually need to do? I, you know, in recovery, we talk about the next best step. What is the very next best step that we can take? I remember back in the day, in the very beginning of my recovery, if I were to feel a certain way or just have a craving or anything, I'd call up my sponsor and she would say to me, we don't need to like change your entire life right now, right? Okay, what is the very next best step that you can take? And it's often the simplest and it's often the one, it's the one that's the most powerful, right? Because it's that very next step step is in alignment with what it is that you actually want. So once we actually get clear on that, and I love that you said you had a mentor that said desires are just continuous expectation of fulfillment. Is that correct? It's just a continuous expectation of fulfillment. What do we do after that? What's the, what's the third, is there a third step? Yeah. So yeah. And it was Raymond Hollywell who said that Raymond um, okay. I haven't worked with him. I don't even know if he's still alive, but <laughs> that'd be awesome. Um, so yeah. So then you need to be like, okay, well, let me back up desires aren't finite. And I want people to really understand that you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to decide randomly that you want to live in Austin, Texas, after saying you would never live in Texas ever, which is my story. And that's okay. So we're constantly tuning in and revising that list. Okay. Now the expectation is around that, you know, you're meant for a bigger life. You know, you're meant for, maybe there's certain things that are finite and you're super clear mm -hmm. and you continually expect that to happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we're evaluating our desires. We're asking ourselves, how can we take the steps that we need, that we get to take to get closer to making that our reality. And mm -hmm. we're constantly evaluating what those things are. Mm -hmm. And for the things that are there might be some things on the list where you actually need to enlist some help to make it happen, like a business coach or some, a therapist or whoever mm -hmm. it may be to support you. So have awareness around like, who does my tribe get to be here? Mm -hmm. And then how do I get to transform in order to make that happen? So really evaluate them line by line. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I also like to evaluate them in terms of how much is it going to cost? Mm -hmm. to make that a reality and start to take simple steps towards the things that you can take off the list right away 
because, and that will help you start to develop your trust muscles with yourself, Mm -hmm. where you're able to, to trust that your desires are truth. You're able to know that you can achieve them. And the more that your mind sees that again, the bigger action steps you're going to be able to take. And you'll able, you'll be able to make decisions like you made in Mexico, or I made after, you know, two days visiting Austin to do something a bit bigger or -hmm. what other people might deem drastic. Um, you also want to be on the lookout for anything that you might be judging, because a lot of people don't understand that whatever we're judging, we're blocking. And, you know, I realized this even recently, I was reading people magazine and saw this Kelly Clarkson article about her ex-husband who wanted $450,000 a month in spousal support. And I was like, what could this guy want with $450,000 a month? And then I realized what was happening and I've done this work for a long time. So I was in, I was in a spa and I actually made a list of if I had $450,000 a month coming in personally, what I would spend it on. And I actually realized I had a purpose for $500,000 a month Mm. and me living my fully expressed life would, I would definitely be fully expressed with 500 K a month. Like it was very clear and super Mm. exciting. And so I knew, you know, if you add that up, you know, 450 K a month, it's like 6 million a year. I know that I want to make way more than 6 million a year. And so I Mm. realized if I'm judging this person and yet I'm saying, I want to make six, $6 million a year or more, that's an issue. That's like a misalignment. So be clear. Are you in alignment with your desires? Do you actually, truly want what you want, because if you're judging, you're not going to get it. You're going to stop yourself. Your subconscious doesn't want you to be in judgment of yourself. So you're going to block yourself every time. That is okay. First of all, that is absolutely mind blowing. Um, on so many levels, I just, I just loved the, that when you're judging, you're blocking. And I also loved, and I want everyone hearing this, like now that, now that you've heard Emily say this out loud about, judging is blocking notice the next time you're judging and instead i love how you took that article you're like wait a minute but well what would i do with five hundred thousand dollars instead of judging kelly clarkson's husband right or ex-husband whatever for wanting that i love how you turned that around and you realize like oh wait i actually want to make way more than you know i want to make way more than six million and i just i love the way that you're able to see that um because i think i mean i do that i've done that do i still sometimes do that absolutely but it's what i love is what you're what you're suggesting is to become aware of it and instead transforming that judgy energy into really being like, is this something that I actually really want? Because if you're judging it, you're blocking it and it's going to be that much harder for you to even bring that into your life. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so much mm-hmm. of getting closer to your desires and creating a life you love is self-awareness mm-hmm. <laughs> and just, you know, being able, like, I like to think about it as I'm on the outside looking in mm-hmm. and observing myself on a regular basis and being aware enough to know when my mind is in the gutter, I need mm-hmm. like a reset, like you're describing, I need to talk to a therapist or a coach, mm-hmm. um, and get some support. And just again, being secure enough and excited enough about your desires to know that, you know, you're going to take the steps to make them a reality. You're not going to stay stuck in the current place that you're in because that's not actually what you want. And you know, mm-hmm. you're meant for more. So I want to segue to this section of the podcast. And I remember I did this with James, your husband. And for everyone listening, I'll put um, my interview with James. We talked about embrace, embracing being selfish. James was super passionate about that. And so I want to ask you what's something that you've really been like, you know, now that you're transitioning and evolving into motherhood and you're going to have a girl, which is so beautiful and you're so happy. And I, I, I was I almost had a tear fall out of my eyeball when I heard you say that you're so mindful of how you're speaking, what you're watching, because it's not just you anymore. There's someone growing inside of you who can hear everything, even even if it doesn't make sense in her brain right now, just the vibration of what you're listening to with the vibration, the people that you're around. So, you know, as you're evolving into this next season of who you are, what's something that you've been wanting to say out loud that maybe is just coming to surface or just, you know, something that's on your heart that you're like, you know, I really want to say this out loud. As we're talking about desires, so often in the past for me, I would ask myself, does this feel exciting? Does Mm -hmm. it feel, you know, does it evoke something in me? And what I realized recently is that's not actually 
the emotion I'm craving at this point in my life. And that's why I'm so excited, you know, to be here talking about like desires in general, but also the fact that they get to ebb and flow and you get to change your mind and there's different seasons. Because now when I think about the emotion I'm craving, it's stability. And, you know, I never would have said that (laughs) two years ago or even maybe a year ago, but you know, about, I'm about to be a mom. I've been working really hard the last eight years. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I've been doing all the things. I'm definitely a multi-passionate entrepreneur. And now I'm just like, how can we make this as simple and stable as possible? And there's always going to be a chapter for me to do something completely outlandish Mm -hmm. or, you know, ramp things up in a huge way. But really like the thing, the mile marker I'm looking at right now is, is this providing stability for me? And I think that's so interesting to think about because it's not just about, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no, nothing. I was massaging my jaw. I have a Invisalign and go ahead. (laughs) It's not just about, you know, desires, but like, what is the emotion that you're also looking for? What are you, or even I had an interview with Danielle Laporte recently, and she's talking about like, what do you want to embody? Not just what do you want to feel? And so just trusting, you know, that there are different chapters and one for, you know, for one chapter, you might be looking for excitement or achievement or whatever it is. And then another chapter might be completely different and that's okay. Thank you so much for saying that you've, first of all, you are helping me on so many levels right now. And I, I resonate with what you're saying about the exciting. Um, I've always followed the fun. I've always followed the spark. And I'm in a season of stability too. I, I go to sleep at the same time. I wake up at the same time. I work out at the same time. And being disciplined is something that I never would have normally called myself years ago. I, I mean, I was not a disciplined person. I mean, no, 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 I'm gonna say that differently. I, and, and I would not have labeled myself as consistent, but let me change what I want to say. I was consistent. I just was not consistent towards things that actually really benefited me. It was like I, I, I was disciplined when it came to things that didn't actually serve me. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm, yeah, so I'm in a place now I'm right. I'm right there with you. Like for me, stability, consistency, and for me, building my trust muscle is the season that I'm in. I want to know that no matter what, like, and I have conversations with my, with my inner child and I keep a photo of her. Look at me in my little, I I talk to this. Yes, this is, I love myself in this photo so much. I'm building back trust with this little girl who I have, you know, time and time again, let her down in certain ways. And so I'm in a place of every, you know, keeping it calm, keeping it stable. Um, I'm even working with my, with my voiceover teacher and my therapist on, can I talk even slower? Can I talk even lower? And do we like not raising our voices, right? Because I grew up in a home where we yelled a lot. Well, I didn't yell. I mean, I was yelled at a lot growing up. So I'm even in therapy, I'm practicing with my therapist. It's okay if we have long pauses in our conversation. Mm. Spaciousness is okay. The other shoe isn't gonna drop. And I, I, you know, my mom called me the other day and uh, I go, hello, how are you? And she goes, are you on something? (laughs) Why are you why are you talking so slowly? I go, I'm trying something new. It's called chill Vasavi. Vas just doesn't get bothered by things, but it's been so beautiful just to even practice the slowing down. And I want to say thank you for giving my audience permission to pivot how they want to feel. Like not everything has to feel a certain like you're allowed to evolve out of the emotions that you want, like have typically been the driving force behind the things that you want. Totally. And I think that, you know, for some decisions and some um, pivots in life, it can feel nerve wracking because you feel like you might be letting people down. I know Mm -hmm. for me, you know, we've been traveling a ton this year. We went to London, we went to Bora Bora, all these places, and it was amazing. But after my most recent trip in August, I just had this feeling like I'm not supposed to be traveling anywhere. And I just need to be, I desire to be grounded. And I had planned this whole trip with my friends to Vail, my favorite place. I, you know, have family asking, are we coming back for Thanksgiving and Christmas? And I'm just like saying no to everything. And I'm just trusting that for whatever reason, maybe it's the baby or whatever. My body literally wants me to be grounded on the, on the earth and that's okay. And, you know, if people don't understand it again, that's okay too. Not everyone's going to like every decision you make, Mm -hmm. but when you start to have that, that strength around trusting yourself and trusting your internal guidance and understanding and being really tuned into what you actually want, it becomes a lot easier to be more unapologetic about it. 
Yeah, and I, I, I think you know uh, we can both speak to this. I've, I mean, I, I know personally that you know I've. I'm a recovering people pleaser. I don't know if you have traces of that in your life. It sounds like maybe, you know, like you saying no is is something that you're just committed to. Um, but I think as, especially as women, you know, we struggle with sometimes just saying how we feel. We don't want to let anyone down. And um, saying no for me has been one of the ways that I'm building my trust muscle. Because when I feel that voice inside of me saying to me, can we just chill tonight? I don't want to do this. I I mean, I listen to that voice now. I, I, I pay attention and I don't disregard it like I used to. Like, oh, come on, just suck it up. Just yeah. push through. Just go and socialize. I'm trusting more like, listen, Vasavi, when you want to do something, you will show up. You know that. If right. you're not showing up, it's because you, like, I know what I'm made of. I know I'm the person that if I want to do something, I will. And if I don't, I just trust that if I don't want to do it, I'm not meant to do it. Exactly. Like you yeah. can tell the difference now between when you're mm-hmm. all in or yeah. when something feels out of alignment. And yeah. I think for me, you know, there have been a few instances where I remember something getting canceled and I was relieved that it got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I, by the way, sidebar relief is the most undervalued yeah. emotion. I think it's so telling if you're like, if you envision being relieved that the party is going to get canceled, then don't go to the party. Like that's a clear sign that you're not interested. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I totally get it. <laughs> I, I shared, I, I I've been loving doing these meme drops on my Instagram and I was dying with this one meme that I shared was like, you know, I know it's on our calendar, but I'd really love it if you canceled. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't get mad when people cancel. Cause I'm just like, it's cool. I didn't want to do it anyway. <laughs> Thanks. But, I know. But like, what if we said no yes, first and yes. we're like not giving our power away, but I'm just joking yeah. with you, but yeah, no, I, 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 you know, the same with me, but like, even you, you're just totally yourself. There was one party you and I were at and you were literally just reading on the couch while there were like 50 people walking around celebrating something. And I just had to take a few pictures of you. Cause I was like, that's so awesome. I was, I was very tired. I don't know what happened, but I was like, why can't I just sit on the couch and read this book by Alan Watts? I'm not being rude. I just, I just need a moment. I'm not going to go into the kid's bedroom. Like that's weird. I'm just going to sit. I'm with all of y'all. I'm just in my bubble. And of course I feel very comfortable with Nita. So she knows I'm yeah. crazy. And she's like, you're going to do whatever you want, but that's beautiful. Uh, they, yeah, that's exactly how I just, I, I can't go against myself anymore. I'm 40. Something happened like right before I turned 40, when I was, um, in my 39th year, I just, I made a commitment to myself that the things that I was saying to myself or doing or people I was associating with, I said, I'm not going to put myself through that anymore. I just made a promise. And it's, you know, it's, it's an everyday process. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. It can happen overnight. But for me, I, I wanted it to be a daily practice versus like a, have it be this extreme overhaul of my life, you know? Um, totally. yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear, I have two more questions for you. Um, what is something that you would love my audience to give to give themselves permission to say out loud more of like what what let me say this differently what is something that you want to encourage my audience to say more of out loud hmm just what it is like what your honest truth actually is so mm-hmm. you mentioned my husband uh talking about being selfish mm-hmm. and that's one of the things we've definitely learned over the last 10 years of being married um and working with you know coaches and therapists is just to speak our honest truth and mm-hmm. to put ourselves first in that way, because you're going to be the best version of yourself. You're going to achieve so much more if you're taking care of yourself and you're not doing things out of obligation or guilt, you know, all of that low vibrational energy. And if you're truly in alignment with your desires. So number one, you know, being open and with yourself about what it is that you want. And then number two, being honest with those around you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of my mentors always said that, when you're honest, some people, they might not be energetically aligned. They might, you know, essentially bounce off, but that's okay because, you know, there are plenty of people out there. You can put yourself in groups, get community that is aligned with your vision. And they'll be totally cool when you want to cancel meeting up because it's just not in the cards for today. It's not your true desire. Mm -hmm. Right. And, you know, I always think when I'm ready to make a decision out of obligation or not be honest, would I want my husband or my friends to be doing something that they didn't want to do just because they were worried about hurting me. And, um, I think when we think about it from that perspective as well, it makes it easier to speak our truth. 
Absolutely. And I just want to say on a, on a personal note, right? Like even for my birthday, I remember you and your husband were invited to my, my boat party. And I remember James came in and I, I think you, you had texted me and then I, yeah. And I spoke to James about it and I loved that you decided not to come because you wanted to have an introvert day. You needed a day where you were just with yourself. I don't want anyone to feel obligated to do anything, right? Because life is way too short or long, however you want to look at it. But you know what I mean? And like, I knew there would be other opportunities that I saw, I mean, that I would get to see y'all and y'all wrote the most beautiful birthday card. I still have it. I, I just remember both of you said, I mean, I, I'm assuming you wrote it, but you were like, we're here for you for anything that you need. And I just remember, I was like, man, I really feel these words. And that's why I felt so comfortable months later texting James. I texted James because I bonded with James at, on the boat party. And I, we just had this like great banter and I just felt so comfortable just taking up a few minutes of his time. And, and I'm glad that he had a boundary and I wanted to make sure I didn't overstep any boundaries. And so both of you together, I just want to shout this out because I want to say this to everyone. Like, you know, I'm always looking to spend time with couples. Like I want what they have. And I, I don't think every couple has is the is the complete embodiment of everything that I want. But the one like y'all are great together. But the one thing that I loved is just how y'all spoke to each other. I remember we were at a party. I think you wanted to go. And I remember James was just so understanding. Like just the way he spoke to you was just it was so tender. And I, I cried because it was I loved how beautifully you were treated by this man. And I just, it moved me to tears. And so I just want to say, like, you are such a walking embodiment of everything that you're saying right now. And it's so important. I'm repeating this for myself, repeating this for my audience is to be around people that you want more of what they have. You know what I mean? Because it's, yeah. It could, yeah. Do you have anything to say about that or? I do. Yeah. Thank you for reflecting that. And I think it's a really good reminder that so often we're nervous and we think that speaking our truth is going to lead to people not understanding us or not liking us or feeling resentful, but you can find people like yourself and like James who are super supportive of your introvert side or whatever the thing is, that's your real truth. And even, you know, our friend Nita the mm -hmm. other day, I was talking to her about, or I didn't go to a party and I was explaining to her, telling her I wasn't going to be there. And she said, I could tell that she was like a little bit, like she just wanted to see me. And mm -hmm. I was telling her what was going on. And I said, you know, I'm sorry, but I'll see you tomorrow at brunch. I really want to have all my energy for brunch. And we had a conversation about it the next day. And she said, actually, you know, thank you because you're teaching me how to be more grounded. And I mm -hmm. thought that was really beautiful. And we forget, you know, the flip side of the impact we have when we're ourselves. And when we say our truth, you can say it with love, but mm -hmm. when we speak our truth, as you do on this podcast, mm -hmm. and there can be a positive ripple effect as well. Yes, absolutely. We love Nita. We love you, Nita. I, I didn't even know this, but Nita listens to my podcast. She's like, oh, I heard your episode. I go, you listen to my podcast? We're friends. I didn't think friends listen to each other. I thought like, it was great. So we love you if you're listening to this. We love you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she inspires me to be more socially ambitious. So <laughs> honestly, honestly, though, I, I said to her, I just on a side note, okay, Nita, if you're listening, we're gonna talk about you for a sec. My entire life has felt so much better since she has come into my life because she is the queen of curating community. I mean, yes. the girl, the, I mean, she is and, and she's so um, like, I don't want to say detailed, but she's just she's so good at like knowing who to bring together. And it's mm -hmm. I just I appreciate so much being welcomed into their family. I know you feel the same way too. She's just, yes. she's taught me. I mean, I, I am the one that labeled her. You are the queen of composed confidence. Like the girl can just, she, she's gone through a lot in her life and she just has this energy about her that I aspire to embody just being composed. Like she has this, it's a, it's composed and it's, and it's strong and it's gentle and it's confident, you know? So this just became like an episode about her, you know, the last few minutes, but yeah. I think, I think it's good. No, to I love her. I love her. And I, I always want to, if I feel something about someone, I don't want to wait to tell them. I'm just going to say it out loud. Why should we not let people know how we feel about them? Uh, okay. Is there anything left unsaid, Emily, that you want to say? Just remember that your desires are truth and stop making yourself wrong. <laughs> um, you know, there so often we go straight for the mind and we want to make the plan and have all like the rational, the rational side of us weigh in, but really start with your heart and start with what's calling you because that's the truth. And that's how you're going to create a life that's better than your dreams. And that's what we say at I hurt my life. We help you create a life that's better than your dreams because your mind only wow. takes you so far. Like you can implement all the mindset work that we've been talking about today, but get the dream first. And then you design your mind and your thoughts 
and all uh, the stuff around that. And then you start to make the plan, but you don't even need the plan. Like you literally just take the first step and the plan will present itself. The queen of easy manifestation. That's what you like. It's just, it just feel mad. And I, whenever I think of manifestation, I always feel like that word, it, it feels loaded for me sometimes because it can mean so many things, but it's like easeful manifestation is what I just think of. It's like, you just make it feel, I feel anything is possible when I'm around you. My, I have no anxiety. <laughs> my, my nervous system feels very calm. And when I'm around you, I, I just, I really just feel like, yeah, why not? Why not me? You know, so just thank you for being who you are. It's definitely having a ripple effect, um, not just here. I'm so lucky to call you a friend, uh, have you on the podcast. Thank you. And is there, um, oh yeah, if, if people want to binge your content, I know you have great episodes on your podcast and they want to follow you on Instagram, where can they find you? Yeah. So my podcast is called the I Heart My Life Show. So you can find mm -hmm. that on my website, I Heart My Life, or of course on iTunes and all the places, Spotify. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have a new challenge that's coming up that's oh. completely free. If anyone wants to jump in, uh, it's called the Love Your Life Challenge. And it's really about everything we've been talking about here today to support women and men, if you want to join and creating a life better than your dreams and starting to attract all the miracles that I know that your listeners want to attract to be magnetic to money, to create the relationship, the health, the mindset, move past fear and doubt, all the things. So you can find that at iheartmylife.com slash love your life. Awesome. And when does that challenge begin? So it's September 27th, okay. um, but we're doing it multiple times. Okay. So regardless of whether, when this is released, just check out that link um, because we have big plans for it. So I guarantee it'll be running at some point. Okay, you can't wait, September 27th. That's like, that's in eight days. So that's gonna yeah. be amazing. So we will, okay. All right, thank you so much, Emily, for being on the Say It Out Loud podcast. It's always a pleasure and I will see you soon. Thank you, Vasavi.